Uh, Andrew Weissman, uh, what stood out to you in this two-hour hearing today? Well, let's start with the fact that, that March 25th was a date that was scheduled. This was not something that, that took the defense by surprise, um, and it was always going to be a question of whether it got put off because of the D.C. case, um, the D.C. federal case. But it's not like uh, this was something that he just pulled a rabbit out of his hat. Um, so, um, you know, this is also a relatively easy case. It's been it's the first case it was indicted, so it makes a lot of sense that this is one that the defense should be ready for. Um, and so that is going to go forward. Um, uh, the other thing that happened today is that Judge Marchand decided a whole slew of pretrial motions and almost uniformly, except for one minor thing, ruled in the state's favor. Um, I thought one thing that was, you know, quite interesting was a lot of people have talked about this case seeming like it's not serious and not that important. And, you know, Judge Mershan took that on because that came up in one of the motions that Donald Trump made. Um, and he said, in fact, he found that these were severe allegations. They were very serious. And he is the second judge to have said that with respect to this very set of charges. Judge Hellerstein, a federal judge, in rejecting Donald Trump's effort to have this case be taken to federal court, to remove it from state court to federal court, that was rejected by Judge Hellerstein. And Judge Hellerstein also said, that these are very serious charges. For, so for those people who are listening in thinking this doesn't seem like a big deal, um, they think it is. They view this as part of, um, if proved, as part of um, election interference, but not the 2020 campaign, but rather the 2016 campaign. So I thought that really st stood out, that you have now the second judge saying these are serious serious felonies. Yeah, uh, at that point, uh, Judge Michonne said, uh, the people claim that the defendant paid an individual $130,000 to conceal a sexual encounter in an effort to influence the 2016 presidential election and then falsified 34 business records to cover up the payoff. In this court's view, those are serious allegations. Uh, and Neil Katyal, that is precisely the way the prosecution wants to frame this case. That's exactly right. And I think, you know, the big headline to me after today is Donald Trump is going to face a criminal trial for the first time in our history. Really, a former president is facing a criminal trial. It's going to begin soon, Lawrence, on March 25th. And just to understand just how significant this, significant this is, Lawrence, just review the bidding. First, before Donald Trump was president, he lied and hid his crimes, so he couldn't be indicted then. And those crimes included, as you just showed on the screen, trying to lie to, to hide some stuff so that he couldn't, so that he could win an election. Second, he then becomes president and says he can't be indicted for his past crimes while he's a sitting president in office. Third, he then commits more crimes in office, as Andrew knows better than anyone. The Mueller report lists 10 of them. And he says, hey, you can't prosecute me for my crimes while I'm a sitting president. Fourth. He then gets voted out of office, and he commits crimes to try and stay in office, and he says, I can't be prosecuted while I'm president. So then, fifth, they try and impeach him, and he gets impeached by the House of Representatives, and then he says he can't be convicted because the remedy is actually to prosecute him after he leaves office. He shouldn't be impeached. Then, sixth, he leaves office, and he's prosecuted. And he says, I can't be prosecuted because I was president at the time and I'm absolutely immune for acts I took while I was president at the time. And then seventh, finally, for acts for when he wasn't president, he's now saying he can't be prosecuted for those either, as you were just showing in the interchange with his lawyer, because he's running for president again and is a presidential candidate. Altogether, chutzpah doesn't begin to describe these claims. These are claims that you can't, the guy can't see straight. I mean, in what constitution on earth would permit that sevenfold kind of argument uh, it, it, for absolute impunity? It's a recipe for disaster.